think one of the best things about growing your own fruit and vegetables is the fact that with a little bit of thought, you can do it quite cheap. We're not all destined to be commercial growers. We're basically hobby gardeners. We've got a small piece of land and we have to work to a budget. But if you tweak a few things along the way, you can definitely grow yourself a rewarding amount of produce every single year at minimum cost. We're growing things all the way through autumn and winter and then we're going to spring. Everything through autumn and winter is very slow growing but it does give us a jump on season so we've got something to show before we even get started. But we don't spend a lot of money on what we do because quite frankly we don't have a lot of money. We're no different to anybody else that watches this channel. And all we've done over the last few years is tweak what we do every single season to try and make it more and more cost effective. And of course this year it's even more important. So we look after the things that we've already got and anything that we need to do to improve through the season, we do that at that minimum cost. And that's why we're always buying things from places like Poundland because they have some really good products. We buy lots of fish blood and bone and grow more and potato feed from Poundland and I think these are £1.50 a box last time I checked and they're one kilo in weight so really good value for money and then we get these little jars they're all purpose plant food they're a pound and they last quite a while brilliant to use as top dressings for your plant we use cling film to make our own propagators it's the same thing but much cheaper to do it with a roll of cling film just stretching it over the top you see trees creates that mini greenhouse effect so there's no need to buy expensive propagators we like starters peppers off early in season because they need a really long growing season they can take quite a while to germinate and they definitely won't germinate outside through autumn and winter so you have to do those indoors but then you need to provide them with adequate light but obviously we've also got energy problems going on as well so we use these lights and these are LED lights you can get them from eBay they're about six pounds each and they run at 6500 Kelvin which is bright enough to bring your little seedlings on but more importantly they only run at 18 watts so they're not breaking bank at the same time so just a couple of these above a few seed trays is plenty to get those little plants started again at minimum cost. We use lots and lots of different types of seed trays and containers and we get these from eBay as well and we'll just bulk buy 50 or 100 of those and I bought about 100 of those last year and I've still got twice as many as that left in shed to use this year so because I bulk buy them I get them cheaper and they last even longer. These containers that we grow a lot of plants in, these are parsnips. We get those from eBay as well. And you can also bulk buy those and they work out at pennies. But they're 10 litres and they're perfect for starting off your carrots, your parsnips and your onions. And we also put brassicas in as well so we can get small edded cauliflowers and cabbages. They're perfectly reusable. All you need to do is drill a couple of holes in bottom. And I've been told by one of my followers that certain places have flower pots like this. And if they've got any spare in back, they'll give them to you for free. So that's always worth a look. But when you're doing container gardening, these come in very useful. These nine centimeter pots that we use as well. Once again, I get these from eBay. And I think last time I ordered some, I bought a couple of hundred. And some we can reuse, some we can't reuse. But out of that couple of hundred, I've still got quite a lot left. And this is the third year using the same purchase. And we've still got enough pots to grow plants this year. And that's what we use to bring on as brassicas. Starting them off in those little cells, 12 at a time. And then moving them on into nine centimeter pots. But at the same time, it's using minimum compost and it's less risk than just putting them outside during autumn and winter 
with a chance of them dying from excessive cold or basically just being destroyed by slugs and snails. So we keep them in here on benches. And as those plants get bigger, we just move them into bigger containers. And then we've got these little containers as well. One that we're using to start off some early onions to try and grow big bulbs. And this one we're using for Chinese cabbage. Very small containers, but perfect for your shallow rooted plants. And these you can also get from Poundland. We've got quite a few of these. They're quite sturdy, so you can reuse them year after year. And apart from the fish blood and bone, you can get all sorts of feed from Poundland as well for lots of different types of plants. And you can see in this container, we're using that to grow on some spinach. And we're using this to grow baby leaf spinach. Again, that same cheap container. We've got cabbages, cauliflowers and red cabbage growing in 10 litre containers at the moment. We can move them on later on if we want to, but because we do that container garden every year, a lot of things like this stay where they are. You can also get more decorative types of containers as well from Poundland. This one's got a cauliflower in it. And I think when you buy these, you get two at a time for a pound. Obviously, keep your eye out for those rising prices because we don't tend to go to places like that until after Valentine's Day, which will be this coming weekend. So this weekend, we might take a trip out and see if they've got the gardening stock in because it's round about now that it starts. Got these wooden planters. And basically, they were pallets that were free for collection on Facebook. So you collect the pallet, you cut it up, and you make yourself a nice little planter. And if you went to a garden centre to buy a planter that size, they'd probably charge you about £35 for it. But if you can get hold of any old pallets, that's always worth a look. We've got about 14 of those now, so we can use them for lots and lots of different plants. And the two foot by 13 inches by a foot. So you can get quite a bit of compost in there. So they're perfect for growing potatoes in, especially your first and second earlies, because you're only growing small potatoes. But we also use them for climbing plants, like French beans. And again, they've only cost us time, not money. You see lots of these on videos on YouTube. And you can get these from markets. They're your mushroom boxes, and the full are all perforated at every side. So if you line one of these, with something that allows water to pass through, you can use that to grow plants in, which we've done in the past quite successfully. So if you've got a market close to you, just go and check out the fruit and veg store and see if they've got any of these going free. We've also got these little trays as well. And again, you can get these from places like Wilco's. They're quite cheap and they're perfect for popping your trays in. So then you can water things all together. And when it's really hot through spring and summer, things like that come in really handy. You can just bottom water them, which is always the best way. A couple of inches of water, give them 10 to 15 minutes, drain the water away, and they're done for a couple of days. We also use these as well. They're compost trays. But once again, they're perfect for putting on stands outside during summer, or even just on the ground if you don't have any stands. And you can put lots and lots a seedling trays in here and water those all at the same time or if it happens to be a really hot day you can pop them in there give them a little bit of water and then you can pick the old tray up and move it out of the sun and it might not seem like it now but as soon as summer does it you'll be doing that more often than not and as you can see it will hold a lot of plants so people that are only doing a few plants things like that are perfect and you could probably get trays like this from places like Own Bargains and maybe Wilkinson's. Always remember that when you're buying things like this, keep away from those garden centres because they know how to ramp those prices up. And I would think even more so this year. We also do little baskets through here. Pansies and violas. And we put them in these. These are just 12 inch wicker baskets. But they work perfectly fine. We've even put trailing tomato plants in baskets that small so we get cherry tomatoes cascading down outside again minimum cost for these baskets because they're from Poundland I think they're 150 each they don't take a lot of compost and they're very easy to move around so whether it's a bit of fruit that you want like tomatoes or strawberries 
or just a really nice display of flowers, that is a really cheap option. And we also get little water bottles like that from there. Little pump action ones. Really good for delicate jobs that you need to do on very small seedlings, unless of course you are bottom watering, which you should be doing. But I was asked about these sprayers that you see me use quite often. Probably one of the first things that I bought when I started doing this. And these are five litre pressure sprayers. So basically, you just pump it up and you can spray your plants. But because they've got this long part to them, you can get in between little plants. If you want to just water them around base without completely wetting all the leaves. And that's why I use these. And you can get those from Wilco's as well. And I think they're about £7.50. But as far as I'm concerned, well worth the investment. And I've got three of these because one we use for watering plants. This one I keep filled with a mixture of homemade pesticides. So water, a little bit of washing up liquid and a bit of white vinegar. And I've always got this homemade pesticide at hand. So no need to buy expensive ones from any shops. And that mixture takes care of all your soft bodied pests like aphids. So we've always got one of those and when we need it. And as we go into spring and summer, we'll have another one of these and that'll be filled with feed. So we'll make a mixture up of tomato food, a bit of liquid seaweed and some Epsom salts. So that's a really good feed, which is including nitrogen and magnesium sulfate, which you get from the Epsom salts. So the Epsom salts come as crystals and we dissolve them in warm water and then add them to this container. And the Epsom salt is really good because when it's not really hot, you can actually spray the leaves of your plants with that mixture and the leaves will absorb that magnesium sulfate. And what that does is makes your leaves much lush and greener in colour. And it's also brilliant for feeding roots as well. So when you transplant anything, if you add a little bit of this to it, it's going to encourage those roots to grow a lot stronger. So that's why we use those. They're a good price. They're very useful. I always try and buy the cheapest compost available, but not at a deficit to get one that's quite rubbish. You need to be careful when you go to supermarkets and you see the bags for a pound. I've bought those before just to see what they're like, and a lot of them tend to give off a really strong sulphur odour, which is quite unpleasant. But also, when you're using it, it tends to stain your hands really dark brown, which I don't like. So what I do, is I get one called Vitax Q4 and that's available local to me in Derbyshire and last year you could get three 56 litre bags for £15 which is a good deal unfortunately this year it has gone up a little bit so now it's three 56 litre bags for £18 but we'll adapt to that in his own way by either cutting back on container size or doing a little bit less we'll pay the same amount for the compost and we'll still get good production but we don't want to be paying over the top especially for things like compost because it's one of the most expensive things that you're going to have to buy we all know seeds as pennies and I get my seeds from Premier Seeds on eBay and they're very cheap but the compost tends not to be cheap no matter where you go so if you do get a price increase in your area then do a little search, find out what's workable and see if there's anything you can cut back on this year to combat that. Because we want to be coming out of this at the end of the season with really good production, brilliant harvests, but not at a deficit to the pocket. So you don't want to go over the top buying the most expensive compost and making huge, really deep raised beds to grow a few lettuce. Because when you come to harvest them, your lettuce are probably going to cost you £3.50 each. And that's not what we're supposed to be doing. So I get the cheapest compost I can get my hands on. And I don't buy seeding compost because that can be a little bit more expensive. I just use one of these. It's a cheap sieve. You can get them from Wilco's again. I think they're about £3, something like that. And I'll fill that and then I'll sieve it into another container. So I end up with a much finer consistency of compost. So it's perfect, as you can see, for growing your plants in and starting off your little seedlings. All those oak tunnels that we've got outside, I built myself. We have got little raised beds around bottom, but that's just some cheap boards that I got from local woodyard and I just nailed them together. And then we got blue water piping and debris netting or scaffolding netting to make those oak tunnels, to keep those 
cabbage white butterflies at bay and they work really well. They weren't expensive to make and they're very low maintenance but keeping the white cabbage butterfly off your brassicas especially is a must all the way through season and they do that job for us and we only have to pay for them once. And you can see that we've got quite a few that we've built. That one's 35 foot long. And then we've got some six foot by three, which is perfect for small vegetables like onions, beetroots, carrots. And we have got a video that shows you how we made these. So if you want to see how we do it, then just take a look at that. But they're very effective and they're not costly, and they'll last you a long time. So you can see that those oak tunnels are quite effective. And they weren't expensive to build either. I just shopped around and I found that the cheapest place to buy that blue water piping was Screwfix at that time. And the cheapest place for the netting was eBay. And I bought a 50 meter roll, because that was more cost effective to what I was doing. I think the total price of those combined came to about £47. And we've got all those oak tunnels out there that we've built from it. We've got a bit of water piping left and I've still got some extra netting as well. Just in case I need to replace any. But at the moment, a couple of years down the road, they're still going strong. They're not damaged. So it's one investment and you set up. All the greenhouses out there, including this one were free. I just bided my time and kept looking on marketplace and at certain points in year people decide they don't want to do this anymore so they'll give the greenhouses away because if they try and sell greenhouses people don't want to pay for them because they know they've got to go to the place dismantle them take them away and then reassemble them so nine times out of ten you'll find people just giving them away and even if you can't transport them back to your house yourself. I'm pretty sure there's a few people out there with big white vans that for a few pounds will go and fetch them for you. We were lucky enough at that time to have a little van and it was a little van, a Suzuki carry. But even greenhouses this size, we dismantled and we got into that van and then me and Ginny spent a couple of days putting them back together. So there was a couple of days per greenhouse and we've got two 12 foot by eights and we've got two eight foot by sixes and they didn't cost us a penny except time and a bit of fuel and of course we can't forget about this colander we know these are very cheap to buy from anywhere but really effective in what i do and i've been using this one for a long time again if you see previous videos i use this to just scatter dustings a compost and by doing that once they've germinated they can break through that compost a lot easier and we know we're only burying them a couple of millimetres deep. That's why I use those. So although there's lots of channels out there that have these really big polytunnels, I can't afford to buy polytunnels. And I also don't really like polytunnels. So I'm always worried about the winds around here causing lots of damage, which in turn is gonna cost me lots of money to repair things like that. But these started off as free and a bit of maintenance now and again is all they need. So basically when we started doing this, we started with nothing and we didn't have any money to back up this kind of thing that we're doing now. We just bided his time, worked on a little budget and over the last couple of years this is what we've got for it and it's working really good for us now. And the end result of what we do is not to make money, it's to provide us with fresh, homegrown fruit and vegetables all year long. So although at the moment we've got a bit of a problem with rising prices and energy bills, if you're just starting off this year wanting to garden to grow fruit and vegetables or you've been doing it for a couple of years and you're looking to expand that a little then just for the sake of a little bit of time a bit of thought and a bit of shopping around you can easily achieve that and then you can produce your own fresh homegrown vegetables at minimum cost all year long and if you've recently joined this channel then thank you very much for hitting that subscribe button and pressing that notifications bell and we'll see you on next update take care